Let's pick up here with example 5.1, where we're going to determine the optimum moisture content and the maximum dry density. And to do that, we'll use this moisture density determination data sheet that we have provided. And I've, I've uh, covered up the values that are already filled in because this is what you're going to be receiving, something like this, and you're going to need to fill in these other columns. So we'll go over how to do that. And you're also going to need to create a moisture density curve is for the um, optimum moisture content and the maximum dry density. So let's take a look about how you would how you would go about doing that. Let's take a look at this sheet first. I mean, it just has your information for where your sample was taken, date, um, the volume of the mold. Like I said, that's always going to be this one over 30 cubic feet. So that's kind of a constant for us. Um, maybe if you're in the field, you'd have something different, but most likely it would be that 1 30th of a cubic foot for your mold size at the station where it's collected and the sample number um, and then the test that's going to be done on it. So let's take a look at these values that are given here and how they correlate with some of the uh, values that we've been looking at with our soil phases. As interestingly, they use some different terminology here than, uh, than what we were using before. So what they call uh, the wet weight in grams that's just what we've been calling our big W, our total weight. Now we've always been doing our total weight in pounds. And that is something we're gonna to have to change here because even though this is given to you in grams, the next column here also calls this wet weight, but look at the units, it's pounds per cubic foot. So this is similar to our gamma. So it's really here the wet unit weight and it's, it's really the, when they say wet, they mean the total. They mean that whole sample, so the water and the solids and the voids all combined. So we just kind of use the word total for this. But just know that this first column here is total weight. This second column here is total unit weight. Moving along here, they take a little piece out of it, a sample. And this is, again, similar to our total weight. Okay, this is the weight of that whole sample. And then they go ahead and, and dry that sample. And so this is actually the weight of the solids here. Okay, so just the solid material without the water and without the air. Um, so then we're going to find the moisture content. That's just our W that we're used to. And we're also going to find the dry, again, it's unit weight um, or our gamma D from our phase relationships tables. So that's how these titles correspond to some of the variables that we've been using so far in this class. Okay, so if you turn to your next page, you'll see underneath the example, I've got the solution here. So we'll go over that um, while looking at this table here. You can look at these both together. So let's take a look at test number one. If I can get both of these on the screen, I think so. In test number one, we're starting off with this 1970 grams of this total weight that was given to us. But we want to find the total unit weight, and I put in parentheses here, it's called the wet weight, um, pounds per cubic foot. So in order to do that, the first thing we're going to do is um, convert that grams to pounds. And so we talked about that unit conversion rate, and that will be given to you one pound is equal to 453.6 grams. So you'll need to take that total amount of grams and divide it by that conversion rate, and you get 4.343 pounds. Take that out to three decimal places. And then we're going to find that uh, total unit weight, just like from our phase relationships, it's equal to a total weight over total volume. Remember, our total volume here is that 1 30th of a cubic foot. So when I do that, I essentially have um, that number here times 1 over, this would be 1 over 1 over 30 <laughs> uh, cubic feet. So I just flip that over here, and um, we know that when we're, we have that 
number in the denominator of the denominator that we really can just multiply that by that. And so I go, went ahead and used that mathematical relationship here and took my weight in pounds and multiplied it by that 30 to get my pounds per cubic feet. And I wound up with 130.3. So that's your first number here um, for gamma. Next thing we're gonna do is find the water content um, what they call the moisture content percent. And the way we do that is we just use this sample data in the middle here. So we have 100 uh, grams for our total weight of that sample. And then we know that the weight of the solids of that sample was 91.8. So if you remember from your phase relationships, my water content is equal to my weight minus my weight of the solids divided by the weight of the solids. So in this case, it's 100 minus 91.8 all divided by 91.8. And when I do that, I get this decimal number 0 0.0893, and I can take that to two decimal places to get my moisture content of 8.93%. So we'll unreveal this first column here. And then to find that total dry density, now I'm gonna to have to use that information I got here with my total gamma and with my moisture content. So I take my gamma, 130.3 pounds per cubic feet, and I divide it by one plus that, mo that water content, that moisture content, make sure you keep that in its decimal points, decimal um, form, so it's 0 0.0893, don't use the 8.93. And doing that, I get 119.6. Uh, if you want to take it out, they took it out two decimal places, 0.62. But when you're plotting those points, just having those each to one decimal place is going to be plenty. Because let's just take a quick look at where that's going to show up on just the first point. I've got all four points plotted here. But just this first point, you know, we're going to find our 8. Um, we know that 9 is going to be halfway between 8 and 10, so we're going to 8.9%. It's almost to that 9. And then the dry density is the 119.6. So we're at the 119, and then we're about halfway to 120. So we just put a big point there. So we'll go ahead and follow that procedure to fill in all the rest of this table. And then once you have your data, you're going to go ahead and connect that data with a nice curve here. Um, I like to use these French curves. You can use that to kind of um, make sure that you're getting a nice curved line there when you connect your points. Um, you don't have to do that. You can just use, uh, you can just draw a curve, but I like to kind of put that in there just to see and make sure that I'm curving that correctly. As we're looking at this data, we want to pick off what is our optimum moisture content and what's our maximum dry density and we'll just do that by looking at our curve and seeing where our curve gets to its highest point you know around here and so as you as you do that you just kind of look straight down from here to figure out your optimum moisture content so let's say that's you know it's maybe a little bit less than that 12% so we could call that 11.9% and then put that up so you can see it. And then to find our maximum dry density, well, we'll just go straight across here to find that. And remember, these are going up by two each time. So this is about my 123 mark. So it's about halfway between 122 and 123 uh, PSI. So I'll call that 122.5 uh, pounds per cubic foot. So that's the method that I want you to follow to uh, use, use the data that's given to you, convert it um, as needed to fill in the blanks, and I've got the table, we'll continue going over that, and then to plot it on the chart to pick off your optimum water content and your maximum dry density.